November and we are doing a brand new Meet the Posse interview. This month we're talking to Poster Posse Pro, Mike Maley from south of Chicago in Illinois. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. How you doing, Dad? Doing quite well. The weather's changed. It's cooled off a little bit out here finally. I'm sure you're getting cool up there, up near Chicago. Oh yeah, the weather is, uh, yeah, it's, it's totally fall here. All the trees are orange and yellow and red. Yeah, we're, uh, we got about a couple good weeks of fall and then it'll just slam into winter. Yeah, and then you'll just be inside for the next four months. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike has been with us since February of 2016. I believe your first project with us was Deadpool, but I met you, the first time I met you was in that Salt Lake City Comic Con? Yes, yes, it was Salt Lake City. Yeah, I went out there. Yeah, and I had actually, uh, I had actually seen that you guys were going to be out there. I think it was only like, like, a, like a couple days before I was heading out, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and it was a that was that was a really busy show. But I did, I did get to, uh, I put together a little packet and came over to your guys' table and introduced myself and gave you, gave you some posters and and. Uh, I so felt I bad. We were busy at the time, and you walked up. And you, you handed that to me, and you gave me a card and said, Hi, I'm Mike Maley. I want to work with you. And I said, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, wait one minute. But then you had to get back to your booth. So, I mean. But, yeah, yeah. No, that was a good show. I like that show. It's, um, I liked it a lot, too. Yeah. Have you, I, I, didn't go back. I wanted to go back the next year, but I ended up going to New York. So, I kind of said, Well, I'll go to New York and not go to Salt Lake. So, that's kind of how that. Uh, how would you? Year, I didn't go to anything this year. So. How would you compare New York and Salt Lake? Oh, no comparison. Yeah. I mean, New York is, uh, uh, yeah, New York is gigantic. Uh, it's fantastic. And I think the big difference was, um, you know, I go to C2E2 every year, or, mm -hmm. or I mean, almost every year. Uh, uh, and that's a good show. That's a great show. Uh, I always saw a lot of stuff there. Um, Salt Lake City was very comparable. Um, I sold a lot of stuff, met a lot of good people. Uh, but New York was, I bought a ton of stuff, and I kid you not, I sold it out in almost the first two days. That's amazing. I mean, by the time Sunday rolled around, I had almost nothing left, and people were buying just what I had left. Yep. So, I mean, New York was just, it was a, yeah. It's a different, it is a, you know, I, the only thing I have to compare it to is San Diego Comic Con. Right. And I've done that a bunch of times, and I, one of the things on my bucket list is that I would love to be able to bring all the Poster Posse members out oh, to Southern California. California and do and do San Diego Comic Con because I don't think there's another show like it on the planet. I you know, the show itself is so big, but it really has taken over the city as well. So there are hotels with full lobbies that, that studios are, are renting out and they have their the full lobby is decked out or the penthouse or the upper it's amazing. The whole city is dialed in. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Yeah, so yeah. I remember uh, a buddy of mine tried to get, oh God, we tried to get tickets to it, I think it was like four or five years ago, and we couldn't get in. It was, yeah. But, it's you know, tough. I've never been, I'd love to go. So why don't you tell us about how you got started with posters, um, where you went to school, how it started for you, and then we can get into like what your first print was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I went to, um, uh, I went to school for graphic design, so I am, uh, um, I'm a graphic designer by trade. That's what my degree's in. Uh, and I had been doing, oh, you know, on the illustration side, I've been drawing comic book superheroes since I was, you know, like, since I could pick up a pen. Yeah. Uh, and for the longest time, I was doing black and white illustrations, you know, just pen and ink illustrations of, you know, my favorite comic book heroes. And I mean, I was doing that all through high school, all through college. And then when I got out of college, you know, I kind of, I kind of, moved into more of the design world and started doing uh, a lot more uh, oh, like traditional design work, logos and things like that. And I was still drawing, but not as much. And then, oh, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, I kind of just started merging the two mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, you know, some of the jobs that I was having uh, were requiring a little bit more illustration and I, you know, I had the background, I had the skills to do it. So I kind of was merging my illustration with my design. And, uh, and you know, I tried a lot of different, I tried a lot of different roads and you can see, like, if you look on my DeviantArt account, you can see some of my early stuff. You can kind of see where I was kind of trying to figure it out. I was kind of trying to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I merge my graphic design with my illustration yeah. and not make it look like junk? Yeah. Uh, and, 
you could just see that I was, you know, I was starting to do a lot of Photoshop. And I was doing traditional, you know, like pen and ink, and mm -hmm. then I was, you know, scanning it in and coloring it, like more traditional comic book work. And then I started dabbling in vector a little bit, and that's that's when kind of everything took off. Yeah. You know, um, you know, just being a designer, I like everything, everything perfect. Like that line has to just be perfect. If it's a little jaggedy, that's not going to work for right. me. Right. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be absolutely perfect. So um, that jagged line works for some people, though. It does. It totally does. Yeah. And, I love the people that can do it, and but I just can't, um, you know, every time I would do an illustration, I would sit down there, and I would just try to get it that smooth, perfect line, and I, I could never do it. It drove me crazy. <laughs> and so I started dabbling in Vector, and I do it, and all of a sudden, you get that, and I said, I'm never going back yeah. ever again, and I really haven't, and uh, so that's kind of that's kind of how I started doing Vector. Great. Uh, what was your, do you remember what your first print was? Like your first official, not maybe official so much as, as like licensed, but what was the first print you put on your site and said, okay, there's my, there's a print. The first thing I did, I had started doing, um, I had started doing kind of when I started doing the vector thing, I started taking like some of my, my, uh, oh, like my favorite artists, like Frank show and like Jim Lee and things like that and taking some of their stuff and actually putting it in the computer mm -hmm. and actually tracing it over it so I could kind of get um, a sense of how Vector could work and everything. Okay. And then once I got a little bit comfortable with that, and I felt that I could do it kind of on my own and just, you know, I mean, do my own illustrations, I'd always wanted to do the Bond series. I'm a huge Bond fan, yeah. absolutely huge Bond fan. And um, I always wanted to do a series of posters for, I mean, I mean one for every movie. So I kind of dove in and um, I did the whole series. And, um, yeah, and they were immensely popular. I put them up, and uh, the Bond people didn't seem to really like what I was doing. But uh, They are very protective. Yes, yeah, but uh, I put them up, and, uh, you know, people really enjoyed them. But, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of had their day, and they're, you know, there's still a lot of people can look at them, but they're, sure. they're done. Yeah, I grew up, uh, it's funny you mentioned Bond, because I remember growing up, and my family, my parents would take me to the drive-in to watch James Bond movies every every yeah. whenever they came out. You know, we'd go yeah. to the drive-in drive-in in Maine, and we'd sit there and we'd stuff our faces with snacks, Junior Mints for me, popcorn for everybody else, <laughs> and we would just watch James Bond flicks. So my my favorite was Sean Connery, but for me, I think Daniel Craig has surpassed that. He's great. I gotta go. I'm a I'm a Connery man all the way, 100. percent But yeah, uh, Craig's. Uh, Craig's movies are fantastic. I yeah. mean, they can't be beat. I mean, his movies are just so good. Yeah, he's one of my favorites for sure. Um, so how do you think your style has changed then from when you first started? Obviously, because of Vector, it has changed. Sure. Um, well, you know, I, I'm not sure it's really changed all that much, but I will tell you it's something I fight with all the time, and that's when whenever I'm doing something, I'm always trying to push it. Because I guess my natural inclination is to push it a little bit more detailed, a little bit more into the illustration realm. Okay. So um, it's got a little bit more detail in it. It looks a little bit more, you know, like a traditional comic book illustration. But then I get going down that road, and the graphic designer in me pops up and says, no, 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 no. This is way, way <laughs> too detailed. Yeah. you gotta, you, you got to pull it back. You know, don't make a line unless it matters. You know, yep, yep. It, it's everything in there matters. Don't just you know willy nilly start start cross hatching and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so, you know, every time I do something, I kind of I kind of guess that's what I battle with. You know, I, I mean, when I do it is is how far do I push it? Do I really try to go detail? You know, do I try to keep it more graphic? And um, I think kind of what I've been doing recently is trying to. Um, find key sections um, of the illustration of the piece, like maybe yeah. it's a face or maybe it's a, uh, an insignia on the chest or something mm -hmm. like that and go into more detail in that one area, Yeah. but kind of try to leave the rest of it a little bit more graphic. Okay. So. Yeah, I, 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 one of the first things um, I noticed about your work is that it's, it seems to be very, very heavily influenced by comic book art. Yeah, and you mentioned Jim Lee. Who were some of your influences that that got you and that inspire you? Well, you know, when I was younger, and I was, uh, you know, when I was reading comic books, I mean, comic book art was, I loved it. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, you know, Jim Lee was a big influence. John Byrne, 
a uh, huge influence. Um, Frank Cho, I mm -hmm. uh, love his stuff. Um, those are kind of the big three for yep. me. Yep. Yep. Um, but then later, as I as I started getting into uh, you know graphic design, and so I started seeing what um, some of the modern artists are doing. Um, obviously, you know Brandon Ragnar is. I yeah. saw his stuff and my head just kind of blew up. Amazing. I was like, I, I can't believe what this guy's doing. And um, and I saw Tom Whalen and what yeah. he was doing kind of just kind of blew me away. Uh, um, Eric Tan, um, he works for Disney, but he also does love his stuff. Every time I see one of his posters, I'm like, God. Like, he he <laughs> did his one of my must-find posters that I've been looking for for – Ever is an Eric Tan. It's his X Men piece he did many years oh, ago for Gallery 1988. Yeah, and I I've never found it. I know one guy that has it, and he were he's the owner of Slash Film, and he's like, yeah, I'm never getting rid of that. <laughs> oh, that thing is fantastic. I know exactly what you're talking. I about. I love yeah. that print. Yeah, yeah. One day it will be mine. It <laughs> will be mine. I've got a uh, I've got a lost one. Mm -hmm. It's the last one. I've got that. Yep. I love that one too. Yeah. You mentioned Jim Lee. Have you, did you ever meet? Did you meet Jim Lee when you did New York? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. You know what? <laughs> I didn't meet anybody when I was in New York. Yeah, it sounds like you were busy. busy. I, didn't I did get to. I did get to. Um, I got to go uh, because I definitely when I was there, I said I gotta go to. I gotta go to Tom Whalen's table. Yep. And I gotta go to Jason Edmondson's table. Yes. And I went to both of them. And I bought a ton of stuff from both the guys that I ran back to my table. And that was about it. I didn't meet anybody else. Those two guys are great, too. They're so nice. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's what I was going to say about Jim. If you if you met, haven't met Jim, he couldn't be a nicer guy. At, oh, and it's, right. and you got to imagine at the convention, he's being pulled in 6,000 different directions. Oh, yeah. And everybody wants his time. And when you wait in line and you get up there... It's like everything else melts away and he's just, he's with you. And it's like, That's what cool. do you want? How's it going? What can I do? Thank you. So, I mean, he, he's not, he's not signing going, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he he yeah. stops and takes time and it's, it's fan He's fantastic. That's great. And that's, I like hearing that about people, you know, not everybody's like that. And, uh, I've met other famous artists, one in particular, <laughs> no names. <laughs> But it just wasn't that experience, and it was rather disappointing, you know, and that's all. So next time you go to New York, you got to go say hi to him. We'll do it. And let him know. Um, so what, I, I'm looking at this stuff on your back wall. What, yeah, what can you yeah, tell yeah. me about that stuff? Oh, well, you know. <laughs> what do you get there? Uh, <laughs> that's where I, I spend all my money. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of this stuff back here is um, – all the superhero statues and stuff. That's all sideshow. Okay. And, uh, I tell you, you know, they're great. They are. But I bought uh, that this marble one. Mm -hmm. There was my first one I bought, and I bought it, and I never should have bought it because once I bought it, I mean, the things are like drugs. You can't just buy one. It's like Funkos. It's <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's ridiculous because you buy one, and it's so awesome. That you have to buy another, and then they come out, you know, and then you can't live with half the stuff they come out with. However, Funkos are only ten bucks a pop. That's true. These, yeah. That Batman did not cost ten dollars. No, he did not. No, no. Um, but no, I love these guys. They're fantastic, and um, and yeah, they kind of just sit back at the desk and watch over me and critique my work and tell me <laughs> that I'm not good enough. And, now, what's the art on the kids, wall? My kids come down, and uh, you know, my kids are like my little art directors. They come down, I say, hey. Look at this! Isn't that a cool picture of Batman? And they're just kind of looking at it, going, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Who do they like? <laughs> you know, they like you know they like the superheroes, just not what I draw. Oh, of course. <laughs> you would think you'd be the coolest dad in the world because you can draw this stuff for them and uh, they can have it up in their rooms. Not good enough, Dad. Try again. Yeah. So, what's that art that's up there? Then is that originals or? That, yeah, that is. Um, well, that's actually. Back from my days when I was doing um, uh, like black and white, you know, pen and ink work. Yep. Um, you know, I would just, you know, get these big, you know, boards of uh, or, or big pieces of illustration board. Yep. And just kind of go to town on. And Very cool. uh, that's actually, I mean, I did that for years, and that's really all I have left are oh. basic water in it. Oh. Like about eight years ago, and I had them in one of those black portfolio things that was sitting on the ground, and yeah. it just. I, we got enough water 
that it clipped about the top inch of the drawings, and I had to throw out a stack that big of illustration boards that were just water water damage. Oh, that's painful. Yeah, it was. It water, was a collector's nightmare. I know. Ugh. Oh, sorry to but, hear that. That's not fair yeah, at all. I got some. Uh, I got some. Here, let me grab this. I got some. I got some comic books back here. This is my. This is my uh, pride and glory right here. Ooh. My Batman number nine. Ooh. Love that. Yeah. The cover. It's all about the cover. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. It is. It is. So I. Uh, yeah, I snagged that. And that. That was. That was. That was like a bucket list thing. That cover. It's just so classic and so iconic. It's iconic, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. I hope you lock your door every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my kids know that they can't touch <laughs> If it's on the wall, don't touch. So, with all this comic book influence, what was your favorite comic book growing up? Ooh, X-Men. Hands down, no question. X-Men. I, I uh, started reading X-Men right around uh, the Dark Phoenix saga. Okay. And I was just, I came in just after that. But, um, yeah, hands down, X-Men, no question. I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly embedded in that. And second would be Batman. Oh, see, for me it's Batman. But X-Men's good. I think I'm switched. I flipped, actually. I think Batman okay. for me and then X-Men. And what about, they're doing, so they're doing Dark Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know. Hold on. <laughs> They messed it up so bad once, it's like, I'm, I, now I'm gun shy. I'm like, I don't even really want it anymore. Well, it's not X-Men, but I also know that the, the, the New Mutants is coming out too, and that looks yeah. really different than anything we've seen as far as superheroes. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm actually kind of eager to see that. I know it's, it's going to be a horror film, but it, it looks very interesting. It does. It does. It does. You know, I can't, uh, you know, as cool as that stuff looks, I just... <laughs> I can't wait to see Infinity War. I mean, oh, I, was, I know, I know. I mean, just, just because you know they're going to do it. You know they're going to do the scene where they put everybody in the scene in yep. one big battle, and it's that's going to be worth the price of the mission, right? Yeah, now. it's and they just, every time I read a report, it's like, oh, there's going to be over forty characters. Oh, there's over fifty characters. It's like, yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then, you know, there's talk of of Disney and Marvel buying. The movie oh, section of 20th that. Century Fox. I saw that. That's that's kind of bananas right there. The crossovers. I mean, geeks everywhere are, are holding their breath right now. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we finally get the X-Men and Fantastic Four back in the fold. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. So that would be good. That would be really good. Um, one of the first things I noticed, uh, one of the things that first caught my eye about your from your work was your Empire City uh, series? Yeah. Why don't you give us give fans an update or let people know what Empire City is and sure. if there's a new status on it, like where it's going to be going or anything like that? Well, it, what it is is um, Empire City uh, is a book. Uh, that's what the final piece will be, and really, it's um, uh, it's my second art book, and it's centered around. Um, this fictional setting called Empire City, which is kind of a, uh, you know, a noir city, kind okay. of like, uh, you know, I mean, Humphrey Bogart type of things like that. Okay. But it's got uh, a little bit of dash of like sci-fi in it and monsters and kind of really, you know, anything I really wanted to put yep. in there. But it's not necessarily a story uh, or a graphic novel or anything like that. Really, it's a collection of art all based around this this um, this kind of subgenre that I've created. Before. Okay. Um, and so you might see, uh, pinups, uh, you might see, you know, some like kind of futuristic hover cars. Mm -hmm. You might see, uh, more, you know, like traditional, like noir posters. Um, giant robot, giant robots. Yes. Yes. Giant robots, monsters, you know, yep. pinups and monsters, you know, always good. Robots, you know, all that, sort of, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. So that's all kind of culminating and. Gosh, I've been working on it for so long, and I always tell people, like, when they say something, you know, when they ask that, I say, oh, yeah, I'm going to have it done by the end of the year. You know, it's going to be out by the end of the year. That, I've been saying that for, like, the last three years. So, so, and I keep getting all these awesome poster process projects that I have to work on, and it keeps pushing everything back. So, it's it's really your fault. So, sorry, sorry. My bad. But, um, uh, but I really only have probably about six pages left uh, to illustrate, and then it's, and then it's going to get, and then it's good to go. And, um. I'm going to do it on Kickstarter like I did my last one. Excellent. Uh, so it's going to be crowdfunded, and uh, and that worked really well. So so I'm 
I'm hoping that it uh, it should go well. Yeah, but Good. hopefully, I would say I would have it out, you know, maybe next summer, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Okay, next okay. So I'm thinking next Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably a bit. Yeah, that's probably more realistic. Uh, under promise, over deliver. I guess you know one of those right. things. You mentioned that you've been doing some poster proxy projects. Uh, you just did a really big one with Warner Brothers for Justice League. Yeah. That was fun, huh? Uh, yeah, that was fun because I got to do, you know, I got to do superheroes. And, you know, I, that's kind of, I just feel very comfortable doing superheroes. You yeah. know, I guess it's just, you know, growing up, drawing them. It's just like, you know, I mean, drawing Batman is just, you know, old hat, but it's so fun, you know. But then you um, get the whole team and that's a great group yeah, of heroes. Uh, I mean. Aquaman and Batman and, uh, and Wonder Woman and the whole team. But, yeah, no, that was a really... Uh, that was a really great project to work on. And, it was fun. Uh, you know, I, I was surprised by, you know, there are, there are a few times when you get client feedback that actually helps. Sure. And this was definitely one of them. Yep. You know, we got client feedback and, uh, I definitely think it made it better from the first, uh, from the first iteration that I, that I did. Yeah. I think, I think the end result is that it's quite fantastic and I love that they decided to make it into the collectible movie ticket. At yeah. IMAX Regal Cinemas, so yeah, absolutely. That's kind of steering what to, where I'll be going to see the film. <laughs> <laughs> I love these collectible tickets that all these guys are doing. They look so good, and the quality is really great, and it's uh, it's just an added bonus, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know that I, your bucket list. I'm trying to. Th I, I just recently asked you what's on your bucket yeah. list, and you said do an official superhero work for a comic book or something. So I think this is pretty yeah. close. It's pretty close, yeah, very close. You know, you got to draw the guys and and, and, and yeah. Wonder Woman, but what yeah. else is on your bucket list? Like, what are some of the things that we can hope to get for you in the near future? Uh, you know, I you know I would like to do, um, you know, I think the thing is I would like to do a lot of, I mean, varying work. Uh, you know, um, I would love to do some great packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't done a really cool packaging piece that uh, yeah. for a very long time and I'd love to do some really cool packaging um, for you know for maybe a toy company or something yep. like that yep. know? or uh, with somebody that would have you know some unique or you know interesting packaging yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, interesting in doing a packaging for Rogaine or anything that doesn't interest me but you know, <laughs> you know but yeah. Sideshow Collectibles might need some packaging there you go there you go um, you know um, but beyond that uh you know, I'd love to do some uh, uh, some cool editorial work mm -hmm. uh, for some you know uh, for some high profile magazines like maybe some Wired, yep. or, or Time, or anything like that. Sure, uh, love to do that. Um, do you remember the magazine Omni? No, I don't. Huh? It was a no. sci it was a science magazine, but they had a lot of really cool futuristic sci fi art in there, and I thought it was the okay. Yeah, I think I do remember it. Yeah, love okay. that growing up. So yeah, I could definitely see you doing something for a cool like Empire magazine yeah. or um, Cinema Teaser or uh -huh. somebody like that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to do some editorial work, and I do. You know, uh, I have done a lot of editorial work uh, in the past, so I can dive right into that at any time. What uh, what movies are you looking forward to? And it doesn't have to just be this year. It can be next year too, because next year is well, ridiculous. Got, well, you know, uh, I said I said Infinity War. That's how, yep. that's definitely pretty much any, uh, anything Marvel. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously Last Jedi. Yes. That that, that kind of goes without saying. Um, but I tell you what, you know, we talked about Bond a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to the new Bond, and I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be Craig's last. And I, I think, think so. Kind of from everything that I've kind of gathered is I think this is kind of going to be the end of an era. Yeah. This one. I, and it, now I have this suspicion that after Craig does this and he leaves, I think the Broccoli's will sell the franchise, kind of like Lucas did with Star Wars. Really? Uh, I, I think they'll sell it. Um, Whoa. And there's been a lot of talk that I've read, you know, where and, and you know I think if I was them, that's probably what I would do: sell it. Um, and then whoever gets it, I think they'll, I think they'll keep a lot of the things the same. But I also think they'll change a yeah. lot of stuff. I think they'll make it totally different. Yeah. And um, so, I think the next wow. Bond, I'm really excited to see. But I think it's going to be kind of the end. Yeah. Of Bond as we know it a little bit. So. Jeez, one more thing for Disney to buy. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Which yeah, is fun.
I don't want Disney to buy it because, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know I, I love Disney and they do some great stuff, but, you know, some franchises are not their bag. And I no, 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 and that's true. So let's think. Who would be good to buy that then? Oh, you know, Sony. Um, I, I don't know. Like maybe Warner Brothers? Um, yeah. Is A24 too, too left of center maybe? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Warner should be good. You know, I would think it would have to be like – I think it would have to be one of the big ones to even yeah. bid on it, you know? Yeah. It's, it, there's going to be – it's the – People that can buy it are going to be far and few between, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, let's see what else we learned today. You like James Bond. <laughs> you like deep dish pizza, of course, you're in Illinois. Of course, yeah. Uh, Jim Lee, you haven't met yet, but you're going to. Yeah, I'm <laughs> next show I go to. Yep. Yeah. Um, we got to get you out to San Diego Comic Con. Oh, yeah. And you have a pretty kick-ass comic book collection. <laughs> I like it. And Vector is your kung fu, so that's good. That's yes, that's... Vector is definitely my kung fu. Yeah, <laughs> love it. For fans that want to see more of Mike's work, you can follow him on Twitter at Mike, M-I-K-E-M-A-H-L-E. That's on Twitter. And then his website is Mike, M-A-H-L-E dot com. Yep. And I, keep it, I try to keep it updated as much as I can. Uh... You know, I, I always hate going to artist's website and they haven't updated anything yeah. the last time. So I try to keep it updated as much as I can uh, just with, you know, everything, you know. Yeah. I mean, new stuff, stuff that I'm working on, sketches, anything. I just try to keep it updated. No, your website's great and I, I like that it's easy to get to all your other links too, like Instagram, Behance, all that. So fans, go to those sites, check out Mike's work. Uh, don't hold your breath on Empire City. <laughs> but you will see something... Within 375 days. There you go. I'm adding a couple days in to give you a buffer. Mike, thanks for your time tonight. Hey, John. Thanks. Take care. Have a good one.